Welcome to a lesson on solving systems of linear equations using the substitution method. The substitution method is an algebraic technique for solving a system of equations. It's important that we have algebraic techniques for solving a system because sometimes graphing is impractical. The substitution method gets its name because we perform substitution in order to solve the system. Remember the solution to a system of equations is an ordered pair that satisfies both equations. To understand how this process is going to work before we formalize our steps, let's consider the given system of equations. Notice how the first equation we have y equals two x. Since y must equal two x, let's consider what happens when we substitute two x for y in the second equation. So if we perform this substitution, the second equation would be x plus, not y, but x plus two x equals three. So by performing this substitution, we get a single equation with a single variable, which we can now solve. X plus two x equals three x. So we have three x equals three, dividing both sides by three. Notice how we get x equals one. So for our ordered pair solution, the first value is going to be one. Now that we know that x equals one, and we also know y equals two x, because that's one of the given equations, if we substitute one for x, we'd have y equals two times one, and therefore y equals two. So the solution to this system is the ordered pair one comma two. And let's take a moment and verify this. So we'll substitute one for x and two for y in both equations. So for the first equation, we would have two equals two times one, which is true. And for the second equation, we would have one plus two equals three, which is also true, verifying our solution is correct. But going back to the system just for a moment, this worked out very nicely because notice how one of the equations was solved for y. But in many cases, we won't have one of the equations solved for one of the variables, and therefore we'll follow the steps given below. Let's look at an example and walk through each step. For step one, we solve one of the equations of the system for one of the variables. So looking at our system here below, notice how it would be easiest to solve the second equation for y, because we can solve for y in one step. If we solve for any of the other variables in either equation, it would take two steps, and we might end up with fractions, which would complicate things. So for step one, let's go ahead and solve this equation for y. So we'll subtract two x on both sides, which would give us y equals 20 minus two x. So this was step one. Step two, we want to substitute the expression for the variable obtained in step one into the other equation. So because we solved this equation for y, and we know y equals 20 minus two x, we'll substitute 20 minus two x for y in the first equation. So when we do this for step two, we would have three x minus two times, not y, but 20 minus two x and then equals 16. Step three, we want to solve this equation. So we would clear the parentheses by distributing. Because of the subtraction, we would distribute negative two. So step three, we'd have three x minus 40 plus four x equals 16. Combining like terms, three x plus four x is seven x. Adding 40 to both sides, we'd have seven x equals 56. Dividing both sides by seven, we have x equals eight, since 56 divided by seven equals eight. So now we've made some good progress. We know that the x value must be eight, but remember the solution is an ordered pair. So for our solution, for the ordered pair, the first value is going to be eight. Step four, substitute the result back into one of the original equations to find the ordered pair solution. So we want to substitute eight for x into one of the equations here. Let's go ahead and use the second equation as substitute and substitute eight for x. So for step four, we would have two times eight plus y equals 20, 16 plus y equals 20. Subtracting 16 on both sides, y equals four. So our ordered pair solution is eight comma four. Step five says check the result into both of the original equations. So we'll substitute eight for x and four for y in both of these equations here. 
So for the first equation, again step five, we have three times x, which is eight, minus two times y, which is four, equals sixteen. So we have twenty-four minus eight equals sixteen. Twenty-four minus eight is sixteen, so our solution works in the first equation. And now for the second equation, we would have two times eight plus y is four equals twenty. We have sixteen plus four equals twenty, which also checks. Let's look at another example. Again, our first step is to determine which equation to solve for which variable. And notice how it's going to be easiest to solve this second equation here for x by adding two y to both sides. So if we add two y to both sides, we have x equals negative three plus two y. So this is step one. Step two, we'll substitute negative three plus two y for x in the first equation, which would be here. So for step two, we'll have five times the quantity negative three plus two y minus four y equals nine. Step three, we want to solve this equation, so we'll distribute five here and then solve for y. So we'd have negative fifteen plus ten y minus four y equals nine. Combining like terms, here we have ten y minus four y, that's six y. So negative fifteen plus six y equals nine. To isolate six y, we would add fifteen to both sides. Nine plus fifteen is twenty-four, so we have six y equals twenty-four. Divide both sides by six. Twenty-four divided by six is four. So we know y is equal to positive four. So for our solution, which we know is going to be an ordered pair, the second value will be four. Step four, we want to substitute this value here for y into one of the equations to determine our ordered pair solution. Because we're trying to find the value of x, let's use equation two. So for step four, using equation two, we'd have x minus two times four, because we now know y is four, equals negative three. So x minus eight equals negative three. Adding eight to both sides, x equals five. So our ordered pair solution would be five comma four. Step five, we want to check our solution, so we'll substitute these values into both equations. So for the first equation, we have five times five minus four times four equals nine. So 25 minus 16 equals nine, which is true. So our solution works in the first equation. And now for the second equation, we'd have x, which is five, minus two times y, which is four, equals negative three. So five minus eight equals negative three, which is true. So we verify this ordered pair does satisfy both of our equations in the system. Example three, first step, solve for one of the variables. Looking at example three, notice how for our first step, it'll be easiest if we solve this first equation for y. So if we solve this equation for a y, we would subtract three x on both sides. So y equals five minus three x. This would be our first step. Step two, because we solve this equation for y, we want to substitute five minus three x for y in the second equation. So step two, we would have six x plus two times for y, we're substituting five minus three x. This is equal to positive eleven. Step three, we solve this equation, so we'll distribute here. So we'll distribute positive two. So step three would be six x plus ten minus six x equals eleven. Now here when we combine like terms, something special happens. Notice six x minus six x would be zero. So when we simplify this equation, we get ten equals eleven. Well, we know 10 does not equal 11. This is not true. So whenever the variables drop out, 
and we have a statement that's not true, this indicates our system has no solution. So let's look at our last example, example four. So looking at our system of equations, notice how the second equation here is already solved for y, so step one has already been done for us. For step one, we already know y is equal to x plus one. But because we're using the second equation here, we'll now substitute x plus one for y in the first equation. So step two, we would have x minus the quantity x plus one equals negative one. Step three is to solve this equation. We need to be careful here. If it's helpful, we can think of having a one here, and therefore to clear the parentheses, we'll distribute negative one because of the subtraction. So step three, we'd have x minus x minus one equals negative one. Notice here the variable simplify out again. X minus x is equal to zero, so this simplifies to negative one equals negative one. But notice here we have a true statement. Of course, negative one equals negative one. So whenever the variables drop out and we have a true statement, this indicates we have infinitely many solutions. So in this lesson, we saw all three types of systems of linear equations where it's possible to have one solution, like example one and example two. It's possible to have no solution, like example three. And it's also possible to have infinitely many solutions, like we see here in example four. I hope you found this helpful.